So for this video, I want to cover a few cuts that don't necessarily fall into either of the two categories that we've covered so far and uh, add in some thrusts into our practice so that we can start thinking about how to utilize these things uh, when we go to apply these in a more combat oriented sense. Okay, so the first of the cuts that we're going to add into our practice is the thwart cut. This is in German, it's the Zwerchtau or the Twerchtau, depending on uh, pronunciation. I'm not a German uh, speaker, so I read it, but it's the thwart cut. And this is a cut uh, that is designed as a horizontal cut to the head. The hands are held high, so you defend the whole high line when you throw this blow. Uh, when you throw this to your strong side, that's your right side, when you're right-handed, you're going to throw it with your short edge. And when you throw it to your weak side or your left side as a right-hander, it will be thrown with the long edge or the, the false edge for your strong side, the true edge for your weak side. So it's a horizontal cut thrown, in this case, with the short edge as we step out and create angular space from our opponents. So we're just going to use the same stepping actions we've been practicing, that nice rotational step. I'm going to throw my hands out forwards. You notice that my hand starts leading with the short edge. And in this case, my hands are high, and I'm going to let the sword sit on top of my thumb. That's going to support the sword underneath in that horizontal plane. So when I throw that blow from my right side, there's the horizontal blow, and I'm going to step out at an angular step, and I'm going to extend my arms long in front of me across my opponent's blade. So now I'm trapping them on what is now my short edge, and I'm keeping their hands high. Um, the easy way to throw from the left side is I'm just going to let keep my hands where they are and let the whole sword rotate around my head. I'm just going to turn so that my wrists are touching each other and that's going to rotate my sword around my head and I'm going to step to the left and throw that horizontal blow from the left. So throwing from the right and throwing from the left. The, the blade is horizontal and it drives in deep at their ear while we catch their sword on our strong. That's why our arms need to be well extended to leverage their sword when we do this. So we can start practicing and throwing this thwart cut into our practice on the pen. So let's go and throw the thwart cut into practice on our static target. Uh, this is a great cut for when you're practicing on a target because really what you're doing is practicing stepping around and throwing that cut deep in against what is essentially a, a static opponent. Um, so when I go and I step, I'm going to step wide and throw against that target. I want my hands out in front of me so that they cross against the target and I can throw left and right very easily. So I can incorporate that into my various cutting. I can throw a diagonal, diagonal, and now I can throw a thwart cut and another thwart cut, and then I can withdraw. All of those cuts become super available to me. So the next cut we're going to work into our practice is the crump out or the crump. And this comes out uh, and deflects anything that comes out to attack us. It's not really good for driving in deep at our opponent, but what we want to do is hit their blade or their hands or their wrists. We want to cut down on top of that. And the way we throw this blow is that we start our normal attack just like we would throw that diagonal strike. Uh, but as we throw that, instead of coming out in the long point, and finishing out there, we're going to send, midway through, we're going to send our pommel under our wrist and turn the sword, driving it downward on top of their blade, their hands, their wrists, right? So we send that blow out, and then as we transfer forwards and as we traverse that space, we come down on top of their sword. My foot lands when the impact happens on the target, hands, sword, or arms, right? So again, I throw that blow out. I'm going to impact down and use the same stepping I've been doing, that nice angular step with both feet. So here comes my sword, and there's the turn. And I make my rotational step out. I've made a nice crump out on top of their blade. The same thing can be thrown from the left-hand side where we start our normal attack. But this time, instead of throwing the, the, the pommel under my wrist to send my blade 
to my left, I'm going to pull my pommel outward and send my blade to the right. So as I throw that blow, I'm going to pull that pommel out and let the momentum of the sword drive downward instead of outward. My arms are still going straight out just the same way that it would, especially my front hand. So there, and there's my crump pal from the left. All right, so we do it again. All right. This blow can also be thrown with the short edge, and that's what I prefer to do from the left side. I would start just like I would my normal short edge blow that we talked about before, that diagonal blow from the left. I would throw that same blow, and as it transfers out, I'm going to pull my pommel out. Right? So short edge, there's the lead with the short, and then the pommel comes out, and I crump down on top of my opponent's blade. Short edge. And you can throw that short edge from the right, and it's a little more tricky, because what you want to do is throw that edge inside instead of throwing that edge outside. So I start and I throw deep with that blow. I might start it just like I would with my long edge and then midway through I'm going to transfer to my short edge and then down on top of their sword. So out and down on top of their sword. Out and down on top. I tend to prefer doing this with my long edge on my right side and my short edge on my left. Those tend to make more sense to how my hands and body works, but they're up for you and you should practice both become familiar with how to learn those ones. So the last cut we're going to talk about in this video is one of my favorites. It's a really odd cut. Uh, it starts to actually incorporate some of the ideas of thrusting that we'll be putting into practice after this, which is called the plunge cut. Right. Um, I use my plunge cut from the description in the Dusak section of Meyer. I find that's pretty clear. Um, the way I throw this blow is it starts with a normal diagonal cut. Um, and uh, I'm just going to throw this blow. And the way Meyer talks about throwing is you throw it strongly enough that it comes all the way back around point first, essentially, paraphrasing. but. Uh, we want to throw that blow all the way out and we're going to throw it in a continuous motion until it comes back and drives over our head into a thrust. So as I, I'll do it slowly. As I throw that uh, diagonal blow and it comes back around and then drives over my head into a plunging thrust at my opponent. All right? We'll do that again. So here it is. It's a diagonal cut all the way around into a plunging thrust over my head. You see that I'm not throwing that thrust from the outside. It's actually coming really narrow to my head and straight forwards. That way I can catch anything that's coming down that line to try to hit me in the head. And I end in a thrusting motion. Right? Uh, from there I can just let my point run off by my side. I can throw it again diagonally down from my left this time and then out and around and over my head. You see that my my long edge ends up on top, but it's not really leading this action. I'm not leading in with my long edge. My short edge is kind of leading the action, but my long edge is defending my head. And I'm plunging down diagonally in front of me. All right, so we'll do that again. I'll just do this one from the left. Starting on my up at the left shoulder guard. It doesn't really matter where I'm starting for now. I'm just throwing that cut out. From the left, I'm going to throw it all the way around until it comes back over my head and plunges into a thrust. All right, so a plunge cut from the right. And the plunge cut from the left. All right? Uh, and then when I do those, you can kind of see, I'll do them sideways. So I'm going to plunge, I'm going to start that cut, and then it comes back around. And plunges out. So notice how far out in front my hands get. But I'm not overextended. I'm defending my head just like in that thwart cut. I'm almost in exactly that same position. Right? And then if I want, I can throw the next one from here. I'll just let the point run off, throw to the left, and back around with that plunge. Then straight from this side. Start that cut. 
there's my diagonal cut back around from the right and then I can just let it run off all the way down and back around to my left. Right? The idea is that we're slicing through space whether it's through their sword or just to keep them from attacking us in that time as we enter and then we're allowing the point to come back around as a threat and defending us as we do. So if I step into measure, if I step into distance with this cut, which is really what it's most good for, I'm doing a continuous motion to create threat. So I'm not just stepping and what, getting hit in my head. Uh, I can enter space and block anything that's coming from my head and create a threat into their face. And that's what this plunge cut is really good for. So one of the things that you might notice with these two cuts other than the port cut is they're not really designed for practicing against a static target because they're not really designed to be thrown at the body. They're thrown at the arms, they're thrown into space. We're using that thrusting motion from the plunge cut to drive people away from us. These are things that are more available to us when we're practicing in the air. And they're great for practicing with flourishes and all of that stuff. Uh, so use that when you're thinking about how to throw these cuts. Same thing goes with thrusts. When we start thrusting at a static target, it's just jabbing at this target with our point doesn't really make any sense combatively. It doesn't protect us, it doesn't defend us, it, doesn't, it isn't something we want to be training for when we go into actual uh, combat against another person. Um, the things we want to be thinking about when we're thrusting is managing the space between us and using the leverage of the sword, especially by winding or leveraging their blade as we thrust in, in order to drive their sword away from us and create safety behind the weapon. Uh, so how do we really go to utilize this when we're dealing with a static target that we're practicing on, we need to think about the space in between us and this target and conceptualize what our goals are. Just just jabbing at it isn't going to really do anything. So, um, so I need to start thinking about that space and where I can put a thrust into my practice so that I can bind a sword in front of my target and then activate my thrust and how is my thrust binding against my opponent? Not just, all right, I'm just gonna practice this for a while. Well, this doesn't actually practice any of the mechanics we want to use in uh, combat. So I want to set up, I want to thrust, and then what I want to do is move from my thrust into a cut, and then I can withdraw and maybe, buy, maybe wind, thrust again, and throw another cut. And then I can withdraw, with my cut and I can set myself up for thrust, cut, and practicing those different ranges of actions so that I'm not trying to get to here and then thrust at nothing in space well behind my target, but I can practice my measure, I can practice my, my distance and my intent and how to flow from one thing to another or starting with a cut Throwing a thrust, moving into another cut, and building all of those different routines and actions and making those things smooth with our feet underneath us and our balance as we go. Making sure that I think about my target as an actual combatant with a blade so that every motion that I make also defends me at the same time. So keep training, keep practicing, add these motions into your action. Uh, email me, contact me on uh, social media or in the comments if you've got any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Keep training and stay safe.